Hey everybody, KJ here, and today we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Track Clip Pro by Natural Point. You'll see below that we went ahead and did a review of the Track IR version 5. This is going to be a follow up to that, so you're definitely going to want to check that out before you view this. We're going to delve a little bit deeper into the software, and obviously, we're going to go ahead and review the Track Clip Pro instead of just the regular Track Clip that attaches to just the brim of any hat. So, with this, you're going to be able to attach it to a headset. It is worth noting that it will accommodate a headset that is one and a quarter inch wide and also a half inch thick. So it has a little portion right here that just kind of slides up and out so we can go ahead and attach on something that's a little bit larger. The G35 is a little bit larger in, uh, in diameter here. So there you go. No problems. Attaches just like that. And then you can go ahead and you have a pretty good range of motion actually to go ahead and move and position where you would like this to basically sit on the side of your head. It is worth noting that the Track Clip Pro is powered by USB. When you plug it in, you don't lose a USB slot, but it is worth noting that you do have to plug it into USB for a power. It does have active LEDs. That is what the power is for. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the software and see how to set everything up properly. And we're going to go into the motion section just a little bit deeper than we did before and really get the fine details and tuning in there. So let's go ahead and jump in there right now. Now that we're in the software, we will select the Track Clip Pro in the top left section and our majority of our time is going to be spent in the Motion Adjustment section. In the bottom left, you'll see the graph, you'll see the axis. We will take the yaw as the first adjustment and the yaw is just going to be your left and right motion. So you'll see that it goes only so far. If we want to go ahead and increase that, we can move the bubble in the bottom left, the first one right here. We'll move that up to towards 25 and you'll notice that it moves quite fast. So this is all going to be personal preference. Everything needs to be dialed into what you prefer. If you want to go ahead and make it just snap right in, you can move this bottom one up and create kind of a dead zone and then have it taper off. So it gets there real quick and then it just stops. But what we'll do is we'll set that second bubble to the stopping point of our other monitor because we are using triple monitors and we'll taper everything else off and we will move on to pitch. So pitch is just going to be your up and down motion and that isn't too bad. We might go ahead and dial that back just a little bit because we just need to look at the roof of the vehicle and down just low enough to see the rear view camera that we're using. Keep it there. We'll turn off the mirror section right here on the left right below access. We're going to dial in the rear view camera for the Cadillac. So we will move the second bubble and move the third bubble up here. So that's going to create a stopping point. So it's going to get to that point and the motion will almost immediately stop. And we're going to pull it down even more so that it just snaps into position and stops even further. So it'll snap right into the monitor. That is spot on. So let's move on to the roll. The roll you can get tons of adjustment in here, all kinds of fine tune adjustments that you'd like. But for me, I don't like a lot of head left and right movement, so I tend to keep those settings fairly low. It is worth noting everything is on a personal basis. So you're going to fire up iRacing, get in there, just go through each section, dial it in per vehicle and just feel that you'll know when it's spot on. You'll just you're like that's it right there. So just get in there, play with everything, make sure all the settings are just to your liking. And let's go ahead and jump into iRacing right now and see how we like it. So now that we're in iRacing at this point, we're going to go ahead and feel out these settings with the Dallara in the fun series. And let's see what we can do. We're about to go live here. So we're going to go ahead and view a lap of this race. We're going to see that I'm looking around, I'm looking into my turns, I'm really being aware situationally. So there's a lot going on in the fun series. There's no safety rating, there's no eye rating, there's nothing like that. So everybody really just lets loose. So it's real important to be aware of your surroundings. So that's one of the main reasons why I went ahead and jumped into the Dallara. So I'm looking around, I'm just feeling a little bit more comfortable with what's going on. So even with triple monitors, it feels really good to know that I can see that there's a gap there, there's a gap here. Uh, I have a little bit more room than I, than I expected before. I'm able to really look on the inside or really look into that turn and spot where my vehicle is. It's giving me tons of awareness 
And in a series like this, you just you feel so much more confident, more comfortable, and able to actually get in there and just go, you know, wheel to wheel. So there you have it. We went through the software. We put it through its paces with some races and practice. And before we jump into the pros and cons, there was something that I wanted to address. So when I was doing my original research on the Track Clip Pro, I found where people were talking about the plastic being brittle. So I reached out to the company. They told me that one of the batches did have a problem with, with basically being temperature controlled and the plastic was brittle due to that fact. I've seen no issues with this product right now or in the future. I, it's very strong, very sturdy. I see no reason for concern. It seems like that was just maybe, you know, just a bad batch that went out many years ago, and I don't see any problem with that now. So if that's one of your concerns, I would definitely throw that out the window. In terms of pros, so the product seems to work a little bit better. So when I was using the track clip, just the regular one on the brim of the hat, I would look down, and if I looked down too far, I would get a really, really just kind of a weird jitter. It wasn't all the time, but if I just looked far enough, with this the Track Clip Pro, I don't see that problem. I'll see where it stops when you go all the way down, but it'll never lose, lose sight of the Track IR. So it doesn't do that weird kind of shaking around. That seems to be alleviated. So it's the same, same great product, except for now you can go ahead and use your headset like you normally would if you were gaming. Talking about the cons. So the USB cable. Obviously, not everybody has a wireless headset. So for me to complain about the USB attachment for powering the active LEDs would be kind of silly because I'm still tethered anyway to my computer. And it's not like it, it's not like I'm getting tangled up in the wires. They're not bunching up or doing anything silly like that. So is it a con? It can be a con. Uh, I would have liked to have seen a battery for the product and then maybe plug it in USB to go ahead and recharge like you would with any kind of console controller or something like that. But at the same time, I don't think it's a huge drawback. It seems like it's just kind of a minor pet peeve. So the one big con for me, which is basically the fitment on my G35 headset. So you notice that I can't close the headset. Now I have, I suppose I have a rather small head. So when I put it on, it's not exactly, you know, on my head the way that it should be. It's, it's, it's a little loose. But really that comes down to the design of the headset. So at the same time, you probably just wanna be a little bit mindful of your headset and the design of your headset and maybe how large your head is. If you have a larger head, you're pretty much not gonna have a problem. But again, this, this headset's got a weird design. It's fairly outdated, it's the G35 model. So I don't have any problems using it with that said. It's a minor inconvenience, but at the same time, it's not something you notice. It kind of just blends into the experience and you just have your headset on just like you normally would. So to wrap everything up, I really, really enjoy the Track Clip Pro. It takes the experience that I had before, but now it makes it so that I can use it all the time. So I just put it on my headset, no issues, no worries, don't have to block the viewer. If I'm recording a video, I don't have to worry about my hat just blocking the view of the webcam. It alleviates the issues that I had with the regular track clip that came with the track IR. And man, it just takes my experience and just bumps it to that next level again. I have no complaints with it. I went ahead and went over the cons. Again, the tethered, eh, not such a big deal. I'm tethered anyway. Uh, fitting over the headset, not a big deal. Minor inconvenience, but again, that's just because my headset's large. So I gotta say, good job, Natural Point. I highly recommend the Track Clip Pro. No issues for me, only praise. Can't recommend it enough. So until the next review, we will see you guys in stream.